Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I have the privilege of hanging out with Andrew Neary. We're at the Windy City Smokeout, and he's gonna show me how he does beef ribs. So Drew, I think you guys are the only people here doing beef ribs, so why beef ribs? Well, uh, uh, they pick and choose who does what, you know, okay. so like I, I think uh, Truth is doing brisket, uh, Salt Lick is doing brisket, so they, they had us doing uh, beef ribs, and then uh, Bert is from California, so he's also doing tri-tip. Oh, okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah, so beef ribs are my favorite barbecue item. I just don't think that they can be beef. You get the bark on the outside, it's just phenomenal. So. Um, why don't you show us how you trim them up, how you season them, and then we'll get them on the pit and get them started. Sounds good. All right, real simple, you know. Yeah. So you can trim them, you don't have to trim them. Some guys don't trim them at all. Okay. Um, but so, you do. So, well, well today we're doing, uh, we're, we're trimming off all the silver skin. Right. So, uh, to make better bark yep. or what? Yes. Uh, so, the, the, the fat, the, uh, you, you get your rub on, on the meat and it'll have a better bark. Right. So, um, and so, there's enough marbling in here that you don't really need the fat on top, right? Exactly. So it's different than a brisket. Yep, so yep. if you're cooking a brisket, you wouldn't take all this off the top of the brisket. No, no, you, you want that. some of that moisture. Right, right. You know, so, okay. But there, yes, there's so much fat uh, uh, ingrained in, in the grains of the meat yeah. that you don't really need all this fat on there. Right, so um, you, need, you need smoke, you need time, yeah. you need patience. Yes. You don't, you don't need the silver skin. Yes. And then, uh, so, and then what we'll do is we'll do just slice off all the silver skin out like that. Okay, so just clean up the top. Yep. These look great. These are Creekstone Farms. Uh, oh, so you got, oh. Yeah, these are the okay, best. I had these, one of these yesterday. These are the and best. And it blew my mind. These and are I was the like, best what are the they using? And it's Creekstone yes. Farms. Okay, that makes sense then. So so this is top notch stuff. Yes. And then, as good as it gets. And, and so we have about uh, two parts black pepper to one part salt over okay, here. Okay, two to one ratio. Yep. What do you do with the backside? Anything? Uh, just lightly season it on the backside, okay. but, but heavily on the, on the top. Heavy on the top. Uh, heavy so, on top. Oh, so you can go so heavy because you're doing two parts black pepper to one part salt. Yes. And then, right. and, and as you as you cook it, the, the pepper's gonna get it's mild. Gonna mild. Yep. Yep. It, it'll like tame it over the course of the cook. Yes. I see. And then that pepper's also gonna help with that bark, right? Yes. Because, like for me, if I'm eating a beef rib, I want you know gnarly bark on it, and then just dripping with moisture on the inside and you get the best of barbecue, and, and that's at least to me. That's exactly what the beef ribs will bring you. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna put these on, and at what temperature? Uh, we're, we're cooking at about 250 degrees. 250? Uh, 250 and 275. Okay, and, so uh, you try to keep it between 250 and 275? Yep. And for how long? We'll cook them for probably around seven, eight hours. Okay, so seven or eight hours, and then we'll wrap, right? Yep. Okay. We'll wrap, well, so when, when it, the temperature hits about uh, 180 degrees, we'll yep. wrap them in butcher paper, Yep. Uh, cook them the rest of the way through to about 203. Right. Uh, take them off, let them cool down to about uh, well, 150. Yeah. And then we'll wrap them in uh, uh, cellophane and put them in. Oh, you wrap them in cellophane. Oh. So Ra wrap them in cellophane over the butcher paper and oh. put them put them in the warmer. Is that to hold in moisture? Yes. Uh, and then okay. we'll hold it all night and, until serving the next okay, day. Okay. So a lot of people. So I tell people all the time, like resting is key. That's what most backyard barbecuers don't do enough, yes. right? In, in my opinion. That the most resting, important thing. Yeah. Super important, but nobody talks about it. Yeah. Right? When Brisket, you talk to pros, beef ribs, they yeah. always yeah. rest yeah. for a long time. So, uh, and if you don't have a commercial warmer like what yeah. we have here, you can use a, a Cambro cooler, you yeah. know, you, you might not rest it overnight, but even in a, in a uh, regular cooler, you can wrap it in a towel, put it in the cooler, and let it sit there. And you can probably let it sit there five hours before you yeah, get. Yeah, I'm you with know. you there. Yeah. So what people always ask me when I tell them, you know, a long rest time, we're talking like eight hours. They're like, what? There's no way. And then they'll say, but won't it wash away the bark? No, no. no. So the bark stays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that's part of the reason why we wrap it in butcher paper first. Yeah. And because you want it to breathe a little bit, and, right. and so you're not so you're, foil. Yep, not not foil. Uh, and 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 that's just not. Uh, there's different ways to do it. You know? Right, I, I and, agree and, with you. Yeah, yeah. Barbecue and, can be done a yeah, lot of different ways. Yeah, some people but the same principles apply always. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, it's all the it, yes. It's the ending result is what you're trying to right. get. Everybody's trying to get that same ending result. Awesome. All right, let's get this guy on. 
I'd like to take a chance to thank today's sponsor, Maiden. If you guys know me, you know that I'm very particular about the things that I use when I'm cooking. So I have custom offset smokers that I'm very particular about. I'm very particular about the apron that I use, the thermometer that I use, everything that's involved in making great food. And when I cook inside, it's no different. Maiden produces professional quality cookware and knives and they sell directly to you without the markup. Not only do their products work incredibly well, they're backed by a lifetime guarantee. And these are products I really, truly believe in. I've gone through so many pans, especially nonstick pans, always hoping that the next one is gonna be better. With this, I have finally found it. I use this pan every single morning. This is the perfect egg pan. Their carbon steel pan has completely replaced my use of cast iron pans, which I never thought I would say. And their copper pots and pans are some of the most beautiful cookware you will ever see in your life. You guys owe it to yourselves to go check out their website. The first time I went there, I thought, ah, I'll see what they have. And I spent literally over an hour looking at all the stuff that they had. It was incredible. They look great, but how do they cook? After getting them and using them, I can tell you that they cook even better than they look, which is saying something because they're beautiful pans. They're just so well designed and so sturdy. There's a reason that there are over 30,000 five-star reviews for made-in products. Better cookware for better meals. Right now, Made In is offering my viewers 15% off your first order when you use promo code MAD. That is the best deal you're gonna find anywhere online. So, go to madeincookware.com forward slash MAD, use promo code MAD to get 15% off your first order. That's madeincookware.com forward slash MAD and use promo code MAD. You're gonna be glad that you did. All right, Drew, so I noticed you have a double 500, and there are 1,000 gallon pits here, but why the double 500 not a 1,000? Well, when I originally had this built yeah. uh, in 2017, I had uh, I found two tanks. I was, oh. I was, I was going to try to attempt to build it myself. I uh, found a guy in, in Fort Worth, te Texas, AJ's Custom Cookers. Uh, he uh, gave me a price. It was a great price. I, I drove it down to Fort Worth, Texas, uh, showed him a picture of what I wanted, and he custom built it for me. That's amazing. And so tell me about the box, insulated or no? It's uh, it's uh, semi-insulated, so there's an air okay. gap, there's a 250 gallon tank uh, uh, cut in half right. on both sides, uh, and uh, it's an air gap uh, around it and built the box. I see, okay, okay, so the air gap helps you be more efficient? So with a, with a uh, insulated fire box, right. um, sometimes you're, you're, if your fire gets too hot, um, uh, you, you might not be able to get it back. With an air right. gap, there you, it, it won't, won't get as hot. I see, so kind of built-in protection a little bit that yes. way. Yeah. Okay, so most of the people at home are not gonna have anything like this, but can you still make beef ribs that are this good at home? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I started with two little Weber Smoky Mountains. Okay. That's how I started barbecue, and that was about and then, two. Now you have this. And now I have this. I, I'm, I'm crazy enough to have this, that's why. Right, so let me ask you. You have an offset smoker, which is going to require time and effort, and you got to be there managing fire, all that stuff. Why an offset and not something like a Southern Pride? Uh, in my opinion, this is the best way to cook. There's no replacement for a real fire. It gets the best flavor, the best bark, um, the, just the airflow. That it's the hardest way to cook, but it, in my opinion, it's the best. So the reason people go through the effort is because you get a better product. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I'm like. I'm totally sold out on, uh, well, I don't know if sold out is the right word, but I'm totally committed to offset smokers because I like to tinker, I like to play with the fire, and I think it gives you the best product. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, it is the hardest way to cook, right. but it, and it's the best. But it's also the most rewarding. Yes. Because when it turns out good, you know that you're responsible for that. Exactly. And if you blew it, you know you're responsible for that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to check back on these guys in, what, four or five hours maybe? Yeah, in uh, about uh, five hours we'll probably wrap them. Okay. And then uh, and then maybe about three hours after that we'll, we'll pull them off and let them rest. Okay, do you do any spraying? Uh, every now and then we'll spritz it with uh, apple cider vinegar. Okay. Yeah, I do the same. So We have water, we have water in our, uh, we have a water pan in the front yeah. here. Keeps moisture in there. Um, okay. All right. Great. If these are half as good as what I had yesterday, it's gonna blow minds. Like people are gonna have this, and they'll be like, "I thought I knew what barbecue was, but I didn't. Now I know." All right, man. Thank you. Cool. All right. It's been a couple hours, so we're gonna take a look at these beef ribs and see how they're coming along. Um, you may spray with some apple cider vinegar. You think? Yeah. 
Yep. Okay. Every time you look, I try to I try to spritz a little bit. So don't waste any time. Nope. So if you open it up, spray it. Oh man. What you're looking for is the shrinkage off the off the bones. Those look beautiful. Starting to bark up. If they uh, if they get too, too crispy on the one side, we'll turn them face the fire. No, you want you you want to push it to where you, your 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 uh, thumb kind of goes right into the meat, kind of sinks in. Yep. Okay. Got it. So when they hit 180, you wrap them up in the paper. Yep. You spray them when you wrap. Yes, we spray them with apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then back on the smoker until back about 203. Until okay. three, and then we'll take them off, let them rest until about one, uh, 150, and then we will, we'll wrap them again with cellophane and then put them in the warmer. Got it. So because there's so many people here, you guys are cooking back to back to back to back yeah. for multiple days. There's some that are already done, right? Yeah. So, so we cooked those yesterday. These are for tomorrow. Oh, okay. Awesome. So can we take a look at some of those that are already done? Sure. a bite of beef ribbons, everything you want in barbecue. You have bark on the outside, you have the black pepper, you got the smoke, and this is about as juicy as barbecue gets. So, I'm excited to try it. Thanks, Drew. Okay. And that is unreal. It just melts. It just melts. Really good. Unbelievable. Thank you. Excellent work. There's clean smoke on this. So, when they say pitmaster, it's the person who runs the fire. And with this, you really need someone running the fire. It's not like you dial the temperature on a gauge and then walk away for eight hours. So, major respect to you, man. Thank you. Excellent, excellent you. work. Yeah. So, uh, I have a catering company and now uh, we do festivals in Northwest Indiana called Drew Barbecue and Sauce. Uh, and if, if they want to follow you, you have Instagram. We have what? Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you can follow us on uh, uh, both of those pages, uh, Drew Barbecue and Sauce. All right, we'll put a link in the description so you guys should check him out. He makes incredible food. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're fat, you know. Ah. Oh. Thank you guys for watching. Show Drew some love and follow him on Instagram. You know, give him some support. He makes incredible stuff. This is so much fun. If you guys like it, we'll do lots more. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. See you guys next time.